Bienvenidos, mi amigos. Uh, it's your pal here in the mainstream media. This is a very exciting and special edition of uh, Mad Mike. What should we call this? The Mid Week War Bracketology Edition. Mm, that does sound good. But Garza, I can think of an even nicer way of saying it. La guerra de la mitad de la semana. Yes, indeed. That's right. The A team is here to break down the Cueto Cup bracket. We've got the first look at the 32 Luchador tournament. This bracket is awesome. Um, there's so many permutations to go through. Um, so we're going to break this thing down region by region. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at each of the uh, first round matches. Uh, we're each going to kind of pick the front runner to come out of each region. And we're going to kind of pick like uh, maybe a surprise, whether that's a dark horse or someone who's going to disappoint. Um, so that's what's going to happen right about now. So um uh, monkeys in the truck, if you would, please uh, fire up uh, Region A, um, which we're lovingly referring to as the Bail Region. Um, and uh, Mad Rest Mike and peace, Garth, homie. Rest, rest in, in peace, peace, homie. Um, and let's just get started with our top of the bracket here. Aerostar versus Drago, which is going to be super heated because that, that damn Drago uh, turned on his former trio's uh, partners, uh, Aerostar and Phoenix, uh, just this past week. Uh, talk, talk about starting off hot. I mean, Aerostar versus Drago, that was like one of the first matches we ever got on Lucha Underground. And I'm I I I'm just so excited. Like I I I'm this is gonna be great. Like there are some matches in this tournament that the first round looked like they could be finals. And I think this one this one, if these guys were on the opposite ends of the bracket, this could be a final a Quato Cup finals. But we're in the first round. We're very fortunate for it. I love the top half of this bracket because it's got such a classic um, luchador feel. Because um, the winner of that uh, match is going to face the winner of Pentagon Dark and Arhenis. Um So Garza, we, we all love Arhenis, but he's roadkill here, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's just like he, he's just warming and kind of warm up to Pentagon Dark. That's right. Um, now jumping down to the uh, bottom half of the Bale region. Uh, we're going to take a look. Um, certainly one of the hottest stars in Lucha Underground right now, The Mac, taking on Mala Suerte. And uh, for those of you who are like, who in the blue hell is Mala Suerte? Uh, he's the member of the Rabbit Tribe with the Mohawk and the Mask, um, the least popular member of the Rabbit Tribe. That's who Mala Suerte is. Uh, so, man, Mike, uh, again, I mean, he's, he's roadkill, right? I mean, The Mac is going to... Right through this uh, I don't know. The, the Mac has a lot of enemies. Oh, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. The uh, Mac has a lot of, like, see, that's the thing about Lucha Underground. And that's the thing I love about Lucha Underground. Like, if you think someone is roadkill, they could very easily win the whole fucking thing. You know, you do make a good point. One minute you're Son of Havoc and you're losing every week and the next minute you're... Trios champions. Trios so, yeah, champion, good yeah. point. Uh, let's take a look at the last um, match here in the first round in the Bale region. Uh, and at the bottom, we'll see. Yes, Famous B versus Tejano. Again, it looks like a mismatch, but Garza, you know, you never know who Famous B is going to bring along. I mean, he could bring along beautiful Brenda. He could bring along uh, Dr. Wagner. Um, you just never know what's going to happen here. Well, if you remember correctly, before we went to Jaira's, Tejano was going to be the new Famous B client. So what a better way to convince Tejano to be a client by, hey, I'll let you pass on this round. That's very well remembered. Excellent well, work. I, I, don't, I don't know if, because I, I've watched, I don't know if Tejano was necessarily going to be a client. Well, he's I, been, I, I he's think he was well, trying to get with Brenda. Well, I mean, there you go. And, she, she helped him out with a lucky horseshoe. It's all right. about making Tejano happy. It's true. Got to keep. Or as Famous B calls him, Texano. <laughs> Tejano. Texano. Um, so just taking a look at the bracket one more time. Let me give you fellas. Who's your favorite coming out of this bracket right now? And I'll, uh, or out of this region. And uh, I'll, I'll give you my pick right now if you guys want a minute to think about it. But Yeah, uh, yeah you can go first, Matt. I, I got I to gotta think it's the Mac. I mean, he's red hot, right? Um, he took Johnny Mundo to the limit. The Mac has to be the favorite to come out of this, uh, the Bale region. Uh, Mad Mike, do you agree or disagree? Um, oh, man. See, I, I can't. 
mainly because I met this guy in person, and I think he now knows where I live, and if I bet against him, he may put me through light tubes. I'm going Mr. Cero Miedo himself, Pentagon Dark. Garza, who do you like? Uh, well, I guess just change it. Uh, I do not think it's going to be the Mac. He's, he's already like lost too many matches. He's in the back right now. Uh, and just to not pick the same as Mac, I'm going to go with Drago because Drago has the Undersnaker and Pindar behind him, and that makes a difference. That, that's a good point. Uh, and Cobra Moon. And Cobra Moon. She's very wily. She is no slouch. Um, Garza, is there a, a surprise that you see in this bracket other than uh, the uh, – person you think might be coming out of it i'm gonna go with Tejano, i guess for the surprise uh he, he i think he definitely gets gonna have the hardest path if he gets to feed famous v because then he gets to go against the mac and then potentially either drag or pentagon and both of those matches are main events anywhere in the world so i think Tejano could be a good surprise mad mike all right um my my surprise you guy, I, I'm. I think Mala Suerte wins. Okay, I, I didn't I, mean to I'm laugh. Thinking, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. I'm thinking first round upset Mala Suerte. Because, um, the Mac has come the closest so far to beating Johnny Mundo, and I have a feeling a guy like Ricky Mandel will not stand for that. God damn, Ricky Mandel. Um, it, my. My surprise, I guess you could say. Um, I don't think Pentagon Dark is going to get past the second round. Um, I see him beating Arhenis, but I think either Drago or Aerostar is going to upset Pentagon Dark. I'm not going to tell you exactly how that's going to happen. Uh, I just think it's going to be a hunch, though. Uh, so let's take a look now at, uh, well, the winner of this, uh, the Bale region, is going to face the winner of uh, Bracket C, a.k.a. Uh, the Conan region. Um, Sorg, if you are, or I'm rest sorry, monkeys peace, hit homie. the truck. If you want rest in peace, homies, rest uh, if you peace. want to drop down rest the bomb, peace, this is where it goes to. This might be number one overall seed right here. As we look at the, uh, first round matchups, Vibora, AKA the Undersnaker, Luchasaurus taking on leader of the rabbit tribe, Paul London. Uh, yeah, this looks like a little bit of a mismatch here. Uh, Mad Mike. I, you never know. Paul London has taken down giants before. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily been in the mental state that he's been in before. Uh, but he, he, Paul London Paul London surprises people. Paul London surprises people, and he does have a tribe to back him up, just like the, just like Vibora does. We could see some, uh, some tribal warfare in this first round matchup, that's for sure. Um, and the winner of that match is going to face the winner of... Uh, uh, a match between uh, a, a hot new a hot newcomer at Lucha Underground, Veneno. Oh God, help me out, Garza. V Veneno. Okay, versus Mil Muertes. Veneno. It, it, Veneno. Spanish for losing to Mil Muertes. Am I right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Uh, yeah, there's definitely no way that Veneno is going past uh, the Men of a Thousand Deaths. Uh, even though he's he's coming in from a loss against a Puma, you know, like Veneno is just. It's, he, he's just, uh, I don't know, something to get him what this a little ticklish. And then <laughs> he can continue. Yeah, I think Mill has had his loss for the year, so... Yeah, I think uh, Veneno might be in trouble. <laughs> uh, the bottom half of this bracket is where this is where we become like group of death mode right here at the bottom half of this bracket. Jeremiah Crane versus Kill Shot. I mean, come on, Mad Mike, this is gonna be awesome. Uh, this is going to be, but this is not my favorite first round matchup. Of I this know that. Bracket. That's oh man, but uh, Jeremiah Crane versus Killshot. That's going to be a fun match, and it's two guys who are about on the same plane in terms of Lucha Underground. Like, there's no that's a pick'em. That's in sports terminology. That's a pick'em. Like you, Jeremiah Crane could have a good day. Killshot could have a good day. That's right. I, I there's no favorite in that one. There's no favorite. Well, and let me get let me let you jump in on this other first round matchup. The, the winner of that match is going to face the winner of Joey Ryan versus Taya. Somebody's I getting it below so the belt excited. in this match, right? Somebody's getting it below the belt in this match, no doubt. I am so excited for this match. Oh my god! It Taya Taya's going to destroy Joey Ryan. It's going to be beautiful. She's going to step on his lollipop. Uh, which one? 
Exactly. Right. Uh, Garza, what do you think about these uh, first round matches or that, that bottom half of the bracket? Uh, I mean, the bottom half of the bracket, it's really interesting. Uh, Jeremiah Crane and Killshot are, it's the only match that I cannot really predict because it can really go to either guy. If I have to like go all, all around, I'd say Jeremiah Crane just so he can face off with Bill Mortis at one point because you know there's something boiling up there. Uh, Joey Ryan versus Taya. I think that's the match that's going to get uh, Lucha on the ground uh, sued because of <laughs> sexual harassment. So, I mean, enjoy one of the last guys. You know it's coming. <laughs> Crossing our fingers. If they can get past that week without the harassment lawsuit, we will probably get season four. So here's hoping. Um, who do you guys uh, see as the favorite in this bracket? I mean, I, I, I kind of said that Vibora, the Undersnaker, is kind of like looks like a number one overall seed, but like in my heart of hearts, I'm feeling like like he's not the favorite. Like I feel like it's it's Mil Muertes, right? It's hard to go against Mil Muertes. Uh, he has a history of being already a champion. He's been dominant like for three seasons. It's hard to bet against Mil Muertes. Okay, Mike. I I I will say the favorite is probably Mill. But my pick is also going to be my surprise. Mm-hmm. And and this is also like we also because we also have to think of who's going to win the match between Giant Mundo and Rey Mysterio at the Cueto Cup finals. We have to think of that. Right. My surprise, guys, and, and I don't know if you guys will agree with this. Taya wins this bracket. Wow. Taya wins. Now, now you see, my and surprise was going to be Taya is going to be Joey Ryan, but you just took that and you will like push that rock all the way down the road. So uh -huh. yeah, because I don't know why, and this may be a spoiler. I haven't decided. I haven't decided who my final pick is yet. But I would love to see Taya versus Johnny Mundo for the Lucha Underground title. That could be interesting. I would love to see that. Slam Town explodes. <laughs> Garza, what do you see as a, a surprise in this bracket? Oh, my surprise was actually going to be Taya too, but because of a different reason. I'm not thinking all the way up to Mundo. Everybody on I the Taya just, bandwagon, everybody. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow but me. I'm just thinking I want to see Taya versus Panther and Dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 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 Garza, I, I like your thought. Yeah, I like I, your thoughts on that. I, I saw Penon destroy the whole Lotus Clan. It's time to destroy the whole underground. The worldwide Just underground. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Um, uh, monkeys in the truck. Can we get um bracket B? <clears throat> I'm fired up. Region B, aka the Mister Cisco region. And rest in peace, homie. Rest in peace, homie. And we're going to take a look at the uh, first round matchup. Uh, this is your classic uh, 116 right here. Cage versus Vinny Massaro. Uh, can, I, can I get this one? Garza, tell me Vinny Massaro has a chance to at least come out of this match not dead. Well, the first thing I was, I was going to ask is, who the fuck is Vinny Massaro? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the chubby guy that we get confused with Ricky Mandel all the time. Yes. Is he the guy who farts a lot? He might be. Okay, okay. Yeah, he, ha he, he has nothing against the new gauntlet. Uh, I'm sorry. He's, he's the guy that I've been seeing in early early season three um, um, just walking in on people in the bathroom eating I, a sandwich, yeah, right? I think that's right, okay. yeah. For Except that, in my brain, I, I combined him with Ricky Mandel, and then when Ricky Mandel showed up last week, I was like, damn, Vinny Massaro has gotten toned. But apparently it's not the case. It's just a completely <laughs> different person. So. Oh. Okay, then you know what? I'm going to change my, my book. I think Vinny wins via DQ. Ah, see, that's very nice. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna loop back around to that because I have a thought on that match also. Uh, Man, Mike, let's look at the the uh, the other half of that um, combination here. We've got uh, <laughs> the winner of Cage and Vinny Massaro taking on the winner of Mascarita Sagrada versus Pindar. <laughs> oh, dragons versus midgets! Dragons versus midgets! Dragons versus midgets! <laughs> it's like Game of Thrones, y'all. This is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tyrion Lannister against fucking Drogon. This is going to be awesome. That's a deep cut. <laughs> this is going to be... This might be... Like, the Taya joey Ryan match is the match I'm looking forward to most in the first round. This match might be my favorite in the first round. <laughs> uh, I... 
God, I I would love to say that my upset's gonna be Masqueria Sagrada takes the whole bracket, but there's no way. No, there is no way. <laughs> there is no goddamn no way. way. Um, Unless he is infused by the power of bagel bites. And and Modelo. Um <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Yeah, at yeah. This. yeah. I just something to bring up here. You, we were talking about Bieber and Polanta and how it's going to be rabbit versus reptiles. Mm-hmm. Technically, this is also rabbits versus reptiles because <laughs> the London tribe does see Mascara Sagrada as the as a, as a rabbit. So good. I mean, if they're willing to help Paul London, they're definitely willing to help Marcus Sagrada. That's a that's a fair that's point. They, point. They they do think point. Mascarita is their yes. Yeah, the whole point. tournament could be building up to the next. Uh, Trios, cha- tri- trios challenge. There, there's a lot going on here in this bracket. It, it's far from random. Yeah. I mean, that much we know from sure. There is no oh, randomness yeah, in Lucha Underground. Um, let's take a look at the bottom half of this uh, region, the uh, Mr. Cisco region. Uh, Monkey in the truck, please. Thank you. Um, Mike, uh, Mad Mike, I'll let you jump in on this one because I know your love for Marty the Moth versus Saltador, uh, the guy where oh. um, from the Rabbit Tribe where if you stare at him for long enough, you see like a sailboat, um, that kind of deal. Uh, Mad Mike, what do you think that- about this? Man, this match is going to give me fucking nightmares. It's going to give me a headache. <laughs> no, it's going to give me nightmares. Between Marty the Moth being all creepy and between Sorg photoshopping Saltador into the backgrounds <laughs> of different things, this match is going to give me nightmares. I may have to breathe into a paper bag while watching it. Um, that paper bag I will then use to cover light bulbs so that Marty the Moth doesn't attack me in my sleep. Um, I don't know who wins this one, but Marty is... I don't even know how Marty is wrestling this because he is tied up by his sister at this point. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the <laughs> the winner of that match is going to face the winner of Phoenix versus Mariposa. So Garza, That's what we I mean, call we a are segue. We, we we are set up for the uh, for the for the potential um, Marty the Moth versus Mariposa in the second round. Maybe maybe we get that. That's a tall hill to climb, though, for Mariposa against Phoenix. Indeed, but I think. I mean, from all, all the matches that we've seen so far, I think this may be the sleeper, one of the best matches of the whole tournament. Wow. If Mariposa takes it to Phoenix, we know Phoenix can take it. Oh, we know Phoenix. We know what Phoenix can do. He's awesome. Um, so, Gar- Garza, who do you see as your favorite coming out of this, uh, the Mr. Cisco region? Uh, this is a hard one, but I got to go with Cage, man. He, he has a freaking gun on it. And Mad it Mike? People really hard. Sorry. Um, oh. I, as much as I want to be contrarian, they call him Cage for a reason. He, he's, you know, that 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 gauntlet is going to take him over. I think by the time we get to the finals of this bracket, like by the time we get to bracket winner, uh, group winner versus group winner, Cage is gonna be tough to beat. Cage is gonna be tough to beat. I. Well, I'll, I'll loop back around to that. Um, I, I, I got to say, j- just looking at these uh, guys, I mean, oh, man, do I am I tempted to just go completely out the left field and go with Marty the Moth? But I, I, I just can't I, I can't go against my boy Phoenix. He's, he's too awesome. And uh, I, I'll go with that. I'll, I'll probably get burned for that one, but uh, that's OK. That's I'll roll with Phoenix. Too, really. um, I, I, I mean, my my surprise is that I, I think something I think something. <laughs> Bad is going to happen to Cage. I mean, there's just something about this gauntlet that's not um, that doesn't seem especially advantageous at all times. I, I think something something's going to turn on him. That, that the gauntlet's going to turn on him. Something bad is going to happen. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen versus Vinny Massaro, but it might happen versus Pindar. And uh, it, I, I just I don't know. It's it, I got bad vibes thinking about Cage. Well, uh, I just it, don't isn't, know. Isn't Pindar a dragon god? He's in the reptile tribe, so yeah, I, I suppose. No, no, but isn't isn't Pindar like the the legendary dragon god? That's why Cobra Moon brought him back to life, like Garza. Because then we could, then we have God versus God. Well, he, he, that's Cage the, is not that's a, a true god. god. He's gauntlet. only imbued with the powers of the god, and you never know when the god is going to want his gauntlet back. So, I mean, that's based, kind of my concern, basically, in a nutshell. There. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, my my surprise though, I I think. Marty and Mariposa cost each other their matches. Double elimination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or I, I think Mar- I think Marty and Mariposa cost each other their matches. Oh, okay, that's a pretty good call, Garza. I'm surprised to with yours. Uh, just Cage gets the hue for excessive force or something, and Vinny Masaru advances straight up. Wow. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's something bad going. Something bad going on there. 
Um, all right, let's take a look at uh, monkeys in the truck. Let's go down to bracket D, um, aka um, the Big Rick region. Rest in peace, homie. Rest in peace, homie. And uh, we're going to take a look at your first round matchup. Um, well, I'm happy to report that PJ Black's in one piece at this point in the uh, season. Uh, Sexy Star versus PJ Black in the opening round, my, Mad Mike. There, there's a lot of history in this match, and I'm excited for it. Because uh, PJ Black essentially cost Sexy Star the Lucha Underground title, apart, along with the rest of the Worldwide Underground. Um, I, I, I like to think she gets revenge, at least a measure of it. Um, but yeah, it, it should be, it should be interesting. And, uh, we'll see the winner of that match taking on the winner of Ricky Mandel. I feel like we've talked about him nonstop since the start. Of this. Ricky Mandel versus Prince Puma Garza. That has to be an easy win for Prince Puma. And now that I see it, like, I'm really, really interested in seeing Prince Puma versus sexy star, especially like this darker Prince Puma. Yeah, definitely good. All right. Look into the, uh, well, the bottom half of this region is is just absolutely titillating. Um, first of all, we've got El Dragon Azteca Jr. going up against Dante Fox, and that should be pretty awesome, right, Garza? Yes. You know it's going to be people flying <laughs> all over the place. They're, they're going to like break several laws of physics. And <laughs> at the end, at the end, I think Dragon Azteca is going to do it. Yeah, I think he's gonna put down Dante Fox. And uh, Mad Mike, um, in the uh, winner of that match is gonna take on the winner of Son of Havoc versus Triple Question Mark. Uh, I don't know much about Triple Question Mark. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm full of jokes. Uh, all right, Elephant in the Room. Clearly, the uh, our, our sources within uh, Lucha Underground were not willing to divulge who. Son of Havoc is going to be facing. Who is Son of Havoc facing in this first round match? There's plenty oh, of big God. names that we have not mentioned so far in this tournament. Uh, my gut instinct says Matanza. Mm -hmm. Gut instinct says Matanza. But I, I feel like Dario kind of wants to punish his brother. Right. And doesn't want him involved in the tournament. So I'm going to go. Oh. Hold that thought. Garza, what okay, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if the timing works, but I think we go full circle and it's Son of Havoc versus Evilies. Ooh. I was kind of feeling something along a similar vibe. And again, I don't know if the timing works, but I saw that and I said, Matanza is too obvious. It might be Angelico. So oh, uh, I'm not shit, sure. That'd be good too. I just don't, you don't know how any of these uh, injuries work out. And you know, don't know. You know, it's just because they're healthy today where we stand doesn't mean they're healthy. Whenever the blue hell, this right. uh, thing oh, was shot. Oh, so, I, okay, guys, I'm going to go outside the box. I'm going to go outside the box here. Um, Vampiro. I like it. Oh. Vampiro versus Son of Havoc. I don't oh, know why. Off his medication. Oh. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Think about it. If Vampiro fights Son of Havoc and defeats him, he goes against Azteca Jr. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and and yeah, I I don't know why. The because I mean. The, the rational part of my brain says it's Dr. Wagner. Mm. But the crazy part of my brain in which Lucha, all my Lucha Underground theories are, say Vampiro, for, for reasons. I don't even know why, but I feel like he would enter this tournament in the same group as Prince Puma to motivate him more. I like that. So now that we've unpacked all this stuff, um, who do you guys like? to come out of this region? Oh. Oh, man. That's... That's a tough call. I think I'm going to go Prince Puma. I think I'm going Puma. Uh, he's showing a darker edge right now. So, I mean... Yeah, I, th I think I'm going... I think I'm going Puma. Garza, what do you think? Yeah, to me, Puma's also... A no-brainer, uh, especially now that Matt brought up the Vampiro thing. 
The way Vampiro turned Penta and Julian into Penta and Dark was by pretty much breaking him and defeating him. So mm -hmm. maybe Vampiro was trying to make peace with Dark, and this could be the way. But I think definitely Prince Puma was winning. I I I'm always uh feeling Prince Puma. I I feel like if I had to pick a dark horse, maybe maybe El Dragon Azteca Jr. might be the dark horse here, uh to go with um kind of like him. Um so I guess that brings us to the big question in the room, and that is who is gonna win this whole damn thing and go on to face what we presume will be the winner of Johnny Mundo versus Rey Mysterio? Is that how we're setting this up? Yeah, this? yeah, because the the finals of the Cueto Cup is the same night as uh, Mysterio versus Mundo. And, and that's going to happen at Ultima Lucha Trust, right? Uh, Mysterio versus Mundo is not at... Uh, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, the winner, the winner of the Cueto Cup against the winner of that title match is at Ultima Lucha Trust. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, well, first of all, I think it depends on who we think is going to win the title match. That that is true. Yeah. Because I, mm, all right, I'm going against my initial picks, but the logic part of my brain says Mysterio beats Mundo, but Mil Muertes wins the Cuerdo Cup. Okay. That's the logical part of my brain. Are we going to get to hear from the other part of your brain, or is that it? Oh, oh yeah. The, the other part of my brain is that the question mark <laughs> is Matanza, and Matanza just runs through everyone and eats Rey Mysterio at Ultimate Lucha Trace. Mmm, yummy. Like, like literally devours him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric Eric told us shit was going to get weird. All right. Yep. Um, Garza, what do you think? Uh, so I think that... As much as Lucha on the Ground is a weird place, a much darker place, I think uh, there's still a wrestling booker in the back. And I think Mysterio is going to defeat Mundo for the title because the people want to see a champion Mysterio. And I think on the other side, you can't hinder Pentagon Dark so long. I thought you were going to say you can't, you hinder, can't hinder Pinder. Hinder Pindar. <laughs> don't, don't hinder Pinder. <laughs> That's kind of like the theme I'm bringing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I think our final set, uh, Ultimate Illusion, but it's going to be Pentagon Dark versus Rey Mysterio. Ooh, I like, I like it. Um, I, I have to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Prince Puma. And, um, you know what? And then it works out no matter what you get. You get either get a rematch with Rey Mysterio where Prince Puma can finally perhaps get his win or you get a match against Johnny Mundo where Lucha Underground comes full freaking circle all the way back around to uh, where it began because time is a flat circle. Right, Mad Mike? Yes, time is a flat circle. All of this is a Mobius strip of amazingness. <laughs> I knew there was more to that. I just couldn't remember the rest of it. Um, <laughs> all right. We're going to wrap things up. Oh, uh, Matt, Matt, do you, Matt and Garza, do you guys have a dark horse? A dark horse for the whole tournament, regardless of the picks we just made. Because I'm, I'm thinking of one, too. My, my I, dark I, horse. I, okay, go ahead. Okay, come. No, my, my dark horse for the whole tournament is the man who was promised a title match at Ultima Lucha Trace and then had screwed over mm -hmm. Son of Havoc. Mm-hmm. Like Son it. of Havoc. He's my dark horse to win the whole shebang. Okay. All right. Garza? Um, I guess it's going to be like an overall surprise and a dark horse. I think somehow King Cuerno wins it. Ooh. <laughs> oh. That would make me. I, that's good stuff. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty good. I completely forgot about King Quarant. That's a that's a great one. Uh, oh, oh, that's a great one. A dark horse, a dark horse. Uh, you know what? It sounds it it doesn't sound like a dark horse, but the number one overall seed. No, no, you know what? I'm not going with Fibora. I'll I'll go Jeremiah Crane as my dark horse in this in this uh, tournament. That's what I like. Right. Every time he wrestles, he's he's fighting. He seems to be uh you know looking strong. I think they like him. So, okay. There we go. Um, 
so let's uh let, let's let's take it home uh mad mike tell the nice people out there where they can find you on the internet oh man well you can find me um furiously writing lucha underground fan fiction in my attic um you can also find me <laughs> at mad mike 4883 on the twitter machine and feel free to go to at mayhem show look for the hashtag mm for when i live tweet shows such as lucha underground garza you can find me at DW Revolutions for Twitter. You can go to DWRevolution.com for all your review needs. Uh, we just reviewed Dominion from New Japan Pro Wrestling, and it blew our minds. And soon, you'll be able to read them in Spanish. I'll give you more information about that later on. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, I know. Seriously. Thank you. Um, uh, you find me on the Twitter at Mainstream Matt with one T. Um, Mad Mike. Garza, thank you for joining us. El Hijo del Cueto, this one was for you. All three of us together, the A-team, breaking down the bracket for the Cueto Cup. Um, stick with us all throughout the um, remainder of Season 3 of Lucha Underground. We'll be breaking down all the episodes on uh, this show that uh, we like to call Mike. The Mid-Week War! No, 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 no. Something like, La Guerra de la Mitad de la Semana. Yeah.